First of all, uh, hello everybody. Um, thank you for joining uh, today's webinar uh, in collaboration with Gantner Instruments um, about real-time energy grid control based on big data. Um, I myself am Georg Tra. I'm the head of customer engineering at Create IO, um, responsible for all external um, solution and process engineering. And today I have with me Jürgen Suttility, uh, Vice President uh, for the Energy Segment and Marketing at Gantner Instruments. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello. Um, so before jumping into your very interesting use cases, uh, just some uh, basic housekeeping rules. Um, we will address any kind of questions that come up in the end. Feel free to use the chat uh, during the webinar um, and use the uh, Q&A function in Zoom to send, send us any questions you have. Um, we will try to answer them as good as possible in the um, end of the webinar. Um, let me first start with a short introduction about um, what uh, Create.io is and what we are doing. So Create.io is a company uh, that is, has been founded in 2013 uh, out of Dornbirn in Vorarlberg in Austria. Um, and we now do have locations in the US, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland uh, with offices employing 60 uh, plus 60 people right now. Our main product is CreateDB, uh, a highly scalable database solution um, for distributed, a scalable distributed database solution uh, that is able to ingest and analyze huge amounts of data uh, as you typically also might see it in industrial use cases, one of which we will see today. Um, last year, we also um, launched CreateOM, a smart, smart manufacturing solution built on top of CreateDB uh, that connects people, systems, and machines um, to assist them uh, during the day-to-day -day, um, work operations. In uh, very short terms, what CreateDB really um, is as a database solution, so um, the three main aspects of CreateDB is first of all, CreateDB is SQL compatible. So uh, CreateDB um, uses SQL as, an, as the main interface to interact with the database like you would know from relational database systems. It's built for high scalability um, in a cloud native uh, way that you can scale it out to hundreds of nodes and petabytes of data uh, that you can store and um, query in, in the database. And it's really built for speedy, hot access of data. Um, using the distributed query engine to, to um, really speed up any kind of queries. We have uh, uh, multiple thousands of uh, CreateDB clusters running today globally uh, from single nodes up to distribution uh, uh, deployments of multiple hundreds of nodes uh, for our biggest customers in the analytics area and have uh, a very broad customer spectrum from the industrial um, space that we also are gonna look at in more depth today, but also in uh, various consumer uh, facing applications and uh, many other um, areas. So um, with the focus also on the slides um, of uh, today's webinar, I'm gonna hand over to Jürgen from Gantner Instruments. I stop the sharing so that Jürgen can walk you through. Okay, so you should see now my uh, presentation slide. Hello, everybody. My name is Jürgen Sutterlütti. I'm with Gantner Instruments and responsible for the energy segment and marketing and also oversee the cloud production or ownership and analytics tasks. And in today's webinar, where we talk about real-time energy grid control based on big data, I want to give you a brief overview about Gantner Instruments at the beginning. We are headquartered in Schruns, Austria, so not so far away from the headquarter of Create in Dornbirn, are more than 100 people. And we are not just only using a distributed cloud, we are also a distributed company with offices from Austria, Germany, in Paris, we have offices, Sweden, India, and uh, China and Singapore, and of course, the US. And with this own dedicated entities, we serve more than 30 sales partners across the world to provide customized solutions. So we get a quick and a fast feedback on what kind of data acquisition and control trends are going on in the market. Um, we do 
provide solutions, hardware and software for different kinds of applications. We work in mobility, aerospace, energy condition monitoring, and of course, civil engineering. When we talk about our products, we are providing data acquisition solutions across all levels, from measuring all sensors on digital, analog, or any protocol interfaces, we can provide distributed data acquisition synchronized down to the microsecond and provide open interface faces. And that's important. All this stuff is PC less. So you really can rely on this hardware and don't have any other PC related issues, which we very often also fear in our day to day business. Customers want to configure, visualize and operate our solutions. And there is a substantial demand for high performance edge computing in that market. Now, when you uh, have a look on the architecture of our solutions, we can provide here open interfaces at all levels. We can provide edge devices, edge solutions, but you can also stream the data to your a desktop where you apply different uh, analytics interfaces, run MATLAB, Python, and uh, any browser-based visualization, uh, or you send it up to the cloud uh, or with, with any standard protocols uh, where we also use create DB, which is uh, one of the focus of today. When you talk about real-time data visualization, it's important that our customers can at the end visualize their data very fast, uh, even when it is decades. You see here in this example that we have a plot of eight years of data, and thanks to CreateDB, we can zoom in down to the second. Uh, these dashboards can be created by the customer. I will show you the, a few examples in a bit, but uh, there are on some applications like in solar energy, more than 200,000 parameters for minute for decades, or you have assets with tens of thousand parameters uh, with one hertz resolution and so on. So this is how, what we have to solve and, and serve in the market. On the other side, we have also railway companies who want to measure uh, when a train is passing the bridge. There we talk about kilohertz data. So this is tens of thousands of samples for each train per second. And there are a lot of, of trains and there will be even more trains. So this kilohertz data, uh, has to be stored there. And this we do that based on triggered data. And people want to see that on the, uh, on the screen after the train is passing. To give you an example, when we have just one parameter with 8,000 values per second, uh, we have here in two months just uh, 6 billion timestamps. Uh, and in Crate, we are indexing this information uh, with more than 740,000 entries for fast access. So this amount of data uh, in Crate with the indexing allows us to have very fast access down to the raw data, which we uh, provide in our Kafka cluster. Overall, we are running in one of our production clusters more than 700 million entries. Uh, and this is uh, more than a trillion points in our persistent log. So this gives you a little bit of idea how many data we are processing each second, each minute from applications around the world. Now, when people want to visualize that, they also want to have the flexibility that they can run and configure and visualize their application as they want. This is one example of an EV battery test system where it's about monitoring of the mechanical, electrical load. And you see on the upper right that the update speed of the chart is quite fast. This is thanks to CreateDB, uh, where we have really fast access to all that data that you really can, uh, can visualize these things. Before we now come to the world of smart grid, let me have a quick look about the uh, energy applications within Gantner. We are collecting data from a wide range of different energy applications. It is the local utility in Vorarlberg, Ilwerke VKW, where we do all the hydro uh, monitoring uh, for their uh, security related things. We do a lot of en wind energy up to R&D for fusion reactors, battery testing, energy storage, and so on. And of course, we also measure power quality 
where you have high frequency data requirements, which is, which is one of the specialities of the Gantner company. Uh, but one of the uh, most important thing is that our dedicated business unit for utility scale PV monitoring and control, where we are uh, one of the leading player in the globe, we have here a lot of data which is created in an extremely fast growing market. We are serving with these applications more than 40 countries already, and we provide here turnkey hardware and software for that monitoring and control. And just for the, for the record, there are more than seven gigawatts controlled by Gantner Solutions any time of the day, uh, where we provide here services for the grid. Just maybe you have seen that in the news that when you have uh, also large uh, capacity uh, expansions in Europe, uh, one of the biggest park in, in Europe is a, is a 600 megawatt in Germany. This is also provided turnkey monitoring control by Gantner. Now, um, when you have this data, this uh, volume of data, uh, you create a lot of raw data which you have to provide. Just on the one example on the bottom left is uh, this is in Egypt, a 230 megawatt park. You see that from the moon. All of uh, these four plots, one is more than 2,000 meters wide. We collect the data and then bring it to our data controller, data logger, make it available for O&M and further analytics. On that example, this is raw data, more than 400 gigawatt per year. You have to keep track of that to be uh, able to provide a sustainable business model. And this is also re relevant when it comes to the energy market, because we all know the market is going into a direction where we see that in the news daily. Industry needs more demand. The conventional energy costs are going up and regulations are getting tighter. And national energy security, one of the hottest topics when you look into the news daily, uh, is, is also going. And there uh, is a paradigm shift of the energy generation. Uh, and you see that renewables are capturing a bigger and bigger share. But the point is that these renewables produce electricity, but they are not baseload anymore. They are more intermittent. So there is more flexibility required in the grid, mainly by wind and solar and covered and stabilized by energy storage. And as more generation capacities are retiring, the new generation has to be controlled. And this is exactly where Gantner plays its role and where we are talking about uh, in, the, in, in, in this webinar. Because when you have all these participants in the market, it is no longer valid that you just can have uh, different silos where each energy generation or consumer works for its own. No, it is an interconnected energy network where you have energy flows in both directions and you have energy on demand. And this needs a lot of control, data streaming and processing. And here we are now at the point that this data has to be understood and managed very well. And for that, for sure, you need databases and also um, hot and cold data storage to be able to understand all what's going on. What is common for all these participants is the grid frequency because a stable frequency keeps the lights on. And I thought, well, when we talk about the webinar, why not plot the frequency what we have in our office for a month? Uh, you see on the left side, the frequency distribution of two days. And on the right side now, full February, full resolution, all data out of the crate DB, where you see the frequency changes. We have here a variation of plus minus 0.1 Hertz. And when you plot that, you see that the red lines are always coming to the full hour. This is when at the energy exchange in Paris, the full hour plan is kicking in, frequency goes down after it is controlled again. And this has to be controlled and every participant in the smart grid has to uh, work to the rules, has to co consider the requirements and all that stuff. So this is now where the smart grid is important. And now we come how we tested and validated this in the microgrid at the University of Cyprus. 
Let me have a quick check about uh, the setup of the system itself. We have here a microgrid setup where we have different sources of loads and generation of solar energy, energy storage, electrical vehicles, grid and the load. This is then inter interacted from our controller in real time with the open standard and all the industrial acceptable interfaces like OPC UA, Modbus, Profinet, etc. And stored locally. If there is internet, then we transport that data over the WAN to our cloud cluster, where we inject this into our backend, where we have event sourcing and a persistent lock. We do here also the real-time enrichment. So we calculate power and the FFTs on demand for each timestamp, whatever frequency we have here. And we index that thanks to CreateDB, make aggregations and make it available for fast data access over the API. Our cloud UI can visualize and operate here. And on the analytics, we run dedicated Docker containers where you have JupyterLab and Python integration, which can write back data. And this is the setup in the microgrid for the University of Cyprus. It is important that when you do modeling late, when we talk about modeling later on, uh, we can imply that model on the cloud, but also on the edge with plugins. As we have full control of our Linux stack, we also have here dedicated areas for plugins so that this is resilient and not relying on any network connections. We can also support our partners, what we did in the university case, that you can develop your modeling local and later on transfer that to the hosted stack in our cloud. Now let's have a look how this data, this energy is flowing. Because when you focus on this information, which you gather for each second, we, we see that there is for each timestamp a depth defined energy flow from the weather, the sun is coming in, PV is for example, generating energy, a load is consuming, a battery is charging or discharging and the grid is either consuming or injecting. And we do for each timestamp calculate here the uh, energy flow and then we know what's going on. So that's step one for a smart grid. How is this visualized in our cloud? This is a screen sharing from our cloud front end, where we see the campus of the university with the different facilities, where we see there is actually a 1.8 megawatt of active power running, and we, where we have the full data acquisition on our cloud. So we see what's going on with all smart meters, with all weather stations and so on. So you can visualize that data. A second thing is that you want to look on the SCADA that you see what's going on on which voltage levels on the left side. So you see here the microgrid schematic and you see here the different energy flows. And as saw before, you see here that the frequency is much more variable in Cyprus than uh, what we see here in Austria. Of course, Cyprus is an island, lots of oil generators, more hard uh, energy connection and disconnection. So there is a much, much more variability. So this frequency store and you see also the, um, the quality parameters of the grid itself and also on the right side, the code flows. Um, this is, for example, a dashboard was, which was just um, provided by our uh, students. They just created the dashboard on their own. When you have all that data, we also want to stay informed. So that's why we also offer rules and notification systems so you get instant information when something is uh, going uh, not in the right direction, so temperature ranges, etc. But um, we are working here also on contextual enrichment for rules so that we can enable the user to have faster decisions. As a next thing, when we collect a lot of data, we have to look on how we analyze the data. Where are we going? What are the main trends on that? First of all, a lot of people focus what happened. This is for operation guys, very important. Uh, but why did something happen? So you have to learn from all that events. And here, intelligent monitoring system kick in. Let me give you an example. 
what happened for energy production if there is lower uh, production as you would or there is no production? This is the question, what? But why did that happen? You want to answer what energy was not produced and why? So you have to do some root cause analysis. And here yeah. you have to combine, yes? Yeah, uh, just a short uh, interruption. I think you, we have some audio problems there. Can we give it a more try and we jump directly to the analytic session? Uh, I will share my screen again and then we continue from the normalized energy flow. Uh, we, have, we have seen here the interconnection of the normalized energy flow. And uh, we just use that as an example, you know, when the internet is not always there, you need local resilience, you need local storage, local control. So our systems has to operate all of that, also that energy system with a local controller, which you can rely on. So that's very important. Uh, and um, then you can also add different models on top of that. Now we were here on the, rules and notification, and we now uh, jump into the analytics. Because when we want to discuss about why it happened, we have to understand what was the target, what is the actual result. And uh, this is actually, I think, very important that you have to answer the why, and then you can say uh, and extrapolate further on what will happen. Uh, talking about this in the context of our um, system, so we use in this project here, advanced uh, data processing uh, to identify the deviation. So we take the field data, watch the actual performance, but also bring that data into the machine learning models. Then we can compare and, and uh, with the digital twin. And if there is a deviation, we do some alarming and detection. So all that information is there. And this model can be trained. But it is obvious that only a good data quality level of the measurement data will deliver reliable outcomes. So you still have to measure something and not just can rely on the data scientists on synthetic data. That's just very important for you to, to, to keep in mind. Uh, having this uh, digital twin concept now in place, we uh, want to talk about a few examples of the microgrid results. So this is now a target versus actual comparison, where we do the prediction of the performance of a smart grid component based on training data sets. And we, we achieve here an excellent low error in terms of 2.6% for just successive samples. And even when you randomize this, you are down below 2%. This works as a digital twin for all components of the smart grid. And it is even more interesting when you predict what you should do. But what happens if you run it without training and applying unsupervised learning? You see here that you just give the data into the system, what we acquire, uh, and classify that. And you can get fault classification up to 97% on the top. And this helps you to see if something is OK, not OK, on a very quick way. And, uh, and self-detection of power units and power faults in the microgrid are shown on the lower picture, where you see the system can detect with a, with a magnitude of 5%. This, each color change is 5% different in terms of quality. And the red line is the decision function where it's, the system can decide on its own what's going on in the correct way and what is faulty, that's outside of the, the red line. So you can detect here faults on megawatt scale based on different algorithms. For the data science scientists with us, you see on the left side, the different methods we qualified, and this can be applied to different assets types. And also that this results can then written, uh, be written back into the backend where you can access it with the API and so on. And it's important that this stack runs on the Gantner cloud, gets data on a high resolution through the API from CreateDB, and then you can really run that on the fly. Okay, let's have a look when we combine the measurements of data with data quality routines and system modeling, you can predict the characteristics and the residuals. So uh, this is indicated in that chart. We have 
uh, introduced and discussed on the first column about the data acquisition, which is real world data or test data. You run and filter data quality routines, so you find the errors quickly, which helps you to see if there is any degradation or if the health state is okay. And then you run the digital twin and you identify failures on the fly, which helps you to identify any degradation uh, and, and failures. And that also allows you to go into the next challenge of predictive analytics. In the future on that project, which is still continuing, we'll further enhance energy storage impact on the microgrid at the university. And I um, want to share with you in a last slide, some lessons we learned, even when there is a scalable backend powerful by CreateDB, because uh, I think you also might experience things like that in your own project. Four points, define your analytic scope because you should understand what you need before you define any backend because uh, the backend should not serve the latest technology which you just find somewhere. Uh, it really is your working horse and has to be per, uh, the right purpose for your scope. So it has to be reliable and it is the, uh, very important. The second thing is real world performance data cannot be accelerated. Even when you have a lot of data scientists they can synth synthesize data and all that stuff, but you have to start early and be consistent in the data logging. So you can really qualify your models. And uh, we all know that real world data is key when we talk about autonomous driving and so on. Here, the real world examples are needed to make sure you have a higher high quality of prediction. And the structure and the scalable processing of the data is very essential because you often have to repeat and uh, re-inject the results to make your models work. So keep the data available for data replay. That's very important what we see that there's always a raw data store that you have access to that and can repeat and rebuild everything. And for the data scientists among us, correlation does not mean cause causation. Make sure you understand the dependencies. You can fit a lot, even you get a result when you ingest noise, but is it relevant? This is very important when we talk about results, what we presented. So you also should consider the physics, should talk to the domain experts when you work with a lot of data. This was input from Gantner's side about real-time energy grid control based on big data. And Georg will now share with us more technical insights about CreateDB. Thanks a lot, Jürgen, uh, first of all, for presenting uh, your work and what you're doing in the energy uh, sector. I think it's very interesting in terms of um, uh, data use case. Um, you talked about a lot, large of data volumes um, that you need to store um, and uh, have the um, applications that you, the user facing applications to respond in a quick manner. And I think that's a combination that, um, yeah, typically ask for, for a specific system. And I would like to go into a bit more detail now, um, what makes CreateDB from, yeah, a technically theoretically point, uh, point uh, um, a good use um, for that. So I will share my screen again. I think you can see it now. All right, uh, Jürgen is nodding, which is great. So um, what CreateDB is, is a bit uh, really like a database uh, like no other. Um, I want to go into more details um, um, why this is the case. So what CreateDB really does, it combines various aspects um, that need um, yeah, to be fulfilled to basically power such use cases. We talked about lots of data and lots of uh, different um, variables that need to be collected. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of different of, of uh, factors that are get, get collected and need to be accessed in a fast manner. Uh, and also very large data volumes, meaning which uh, single system can't really handle. There really the no SQL aspect of, of CreateDB comes into place. So CreateDB is built on a shared nothing architecture with an eventual consistent model that allows it to scale up to hundreds of nodes, as I already said before. Um, and uh, basically power any kind of use case that needs fast data access. 
while having a non-blocking architecture, uh, which makes it really fast. Um, we have the SQL aspect uh, that you want to have to integrate with uh, different kind of toolings. We also saw Jupyter uh, notebooks used on uh, the Gantton sites, but also other toolings uh, in terms of the visualization that you want to connect in data and uh, empower your data engineers and data scientists to use your database system. Um, and in the end, you can uh, you want to store your data, um, uh, your, uh, large amounts of data, and you want to access it in a structured way. But also, what's really important is the power of, of search a search engine, um, which in, in the Creative B case is uh, uh, the Apache Lucene project, um, which really enables the fast access times. Meaning that if you are looking up in your visualization, you want to have a query response within sub second, because otherwise the user feels like the, 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 the way the application work is not an interactive way, um, but just some set of data processing. So with the use of Apache Lucene as the backend for CreateDB, we enable this really high-speed data access filtering and aggregation. In terms of use cases, so definitely in the industrial space and in the IoT space, um, uh, where um, on and retail monitoring space, um, what we also saw with the example from Gantner, uh, great to be really um, excels, um, but also lots of other time series um, applications, um, also on the software side and application analytics, uh, but also use cases in the ge uh, geospatial area where you can also use the indexing uh, power of great to be. Um, I also have to say where great to be is really not the great fit. It's not the great fit for any kind of transactional workloads. Uh, or you typically um, on the business, what you typically might see on the business area, or highly um, normalized data, um, uh, like you would also know from traditional data warehouses. Um, maybe on the offering side, um, also uh, interesting. So CreateDB is not uh, uh, a single cloud solution. But CreateDB and its core is really an open source database project that you can use and um, build on uh, um, from the ground up. You can deploy it on premise. But what we really focused on in the last years is uh, developing um, the fully managed cloud solution, so CreateDB Cloud, which really means that you can just with a click of a button deploy also very large clusters and don't have to worry about anything else than just using them. Um, with the recent uh, development of yeah, uh, moving um, applications also back to a more managed on-premise setup, uh, we uh, last year also released CreateDB Edge, which allows you to use your own Kubernetes uh, cluster, um, but still have the creature comforts of a fully managed service like CreateDB Cloud. So I just want to, again, uh, repeat what uh, really are the key ca characteristics of, of CreateDB uh, that also um, empower uh, Gantt in this case. Um, it's the scalability, the really ease of use um, of, of, scale, of a scalable database system um, through the architecture. You can store um, lots of different kinds of data in CreateDB. Jürgen mentioned uh, you need a structured uh, manner, but often also in Many industrial use cases, you might have uh, semi-structured data coming via OPC or MQTT. Uh, you can directly interact on JSON objects and uh, ingest them into CreateDB and work with that. Um, really applications also where high concurrency is needed. Like if you have a user-facing application, you don't want to just have the one user access it, but you might have uh, lots of customers, hundreds and thousands of customers who need uh, concurrently to access the data. And this is also something that's great through the non-blocking blocking architecture and uh, shared nothing architecture in terms of query performance can really excel. Um, of course, also uh, cost efficiency and the way to basically deploy CreateDB um, everywhere, everywhere you want um, from uh, the cloud setup uh, to the industrial PC running in your factory um, that's possible with, with um, CreateDB. If you afterwards are interested in also jumping in, uh, we do have for the cloud also a 30, day, uh, 30 days free trial. Uh, we can also with a click of a button start a CreateDB cluster and um, get started using and interacting with it and uh, to learn CreateDB. Um, so this um, was it basically from, from my side. Um, I quickly jump to the next slide and would want to give also the word back to um, Jürgen. Good, thank you. Um, 
we did hear a lot of data, a lot of uh, things about data and how fast and how big and how uh, variable you can get the data. And I think Mr. Deming made the right statement that without data, you are just another person with an opinion. We are all data driven. The energy sector is a data driven um, industry more and more, and you have to access very fast the data and i think this is where uh, there is also space for create itself and at the end data is not just the, the end we have to really turn that data into information and turn this information into our customer benefits and i think this is always what should drive us always where we should focus without the full solution and the full stack uh, our customers will not see their benefits and um, this is where gantner is in investing a lot of time, effort, and resources that we can do that better, especially also in the energy segment. I completely agree with you. Data is not 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 just needs to be collected, but also made uh, easily accessible uh, to analyze on and work with um, in in a fast manner. Um, yeah. So in terms of, uh, we also got a question already, but I would like to ask you. I mean, um, uh, you basically explained it a little bit also um, why Create B is, is good for your use case, but why did Gantner um, instruments go with, with Create B as a solution, as a data solution? Okay, we are not, uh, we didn't came here by accident. We did uh, have our clear strategy of the company that data is what you have to store, acquire, and so on. So uh, with the trend of edge computing, Gantner, uh, concepts come in fashion again because we are doing that since 1982 data loggers and controllers but uh, when you when you want to have a data backend you need a very performant uh, database and the question is is the date is the database from crate really solving everything it is for us a, a, a two-part answer the one is that uh, with apache kafka we really have all these event logs and the raw data storage and create really is great because it brings a lot of uh, feature sets with the multi-node strategy SQL interfaces and it really is scalable. It is really scalable. We test, uh, tested that a lot and this helps us in combination with, with our solution. And um, we, we really know that uh, when, when you ingest also high frequency data uh, we can work with Crate as the index very fast. I gave you the example of the railway, a kilohertz of data with the combination of in our backend, we, we can really plot here a lot of trains and zoom in down to the uh, a kilohertz signal. And I think this is quite um, advanced. Our customers are valuing that and there are more uh, to be communicated about that where we provide the solutions. I, I think that's also um, always a very important aspect uh, for solutions that you have customers directly interacting with. You want them to be always available and uh, want to trust the solution um, that powers that not only basically to just run it, but it also has to be reliable. And I think that where also the architecture of Crete B uh, can really shine. So, um, Let's see, I think there's just another question um, uh, came in. Um, is it a lot of effort to deploy and run such a great B cluster? Do you need a specialists? I, I can give you an answer. Maybe I can start with an answer and uh, Jürgen, you can uh, then uh, jump in. Um, so, um, as I said, the, the architecture of Gritty B is, is um, a shared nothing, uh, shared nothing architecture, which means there's not like a complex system, but it's just really like an application that you start on, on, on uh, one server and you can uh, just scale the cluster by adding additional um, uh, servers in the same network, which makes it really easy. Um, and, and, and basically the, the, the discovery and the connectivity, um, uh, let's call it magically helps, um, um, happens on itself on its own um and it's really built from the beginning as a, as a distributed system meaning it's not like um that you don't need a complex architecture to to really uh, uh scale it out but it's really like um from the beginning built to scale out um and so even on if you're using the docker images if you're using kubernetes it's really also um, we have ready-made solutions to get started but um uh, even if you want to run want to run, run it on your own um, this can also be easily uh, done. 
I agree. Uh, when you walk through our software development uh, uh, area, under each table, there is CreateDB or our full stack running. So it's easy. Uh, it's a single node stack there, but we develop on that and uh, it's quite convenient to, to run that, start from scratch again and, and, and make uh, very fancy experiments as well. So it's, you don't have to be an expert, but you have to be an IT guy. Okay. okay. I think we got another question um, from um, an anonymous attendee. When storing large data sets, uh, did you did you say one trillion? I don't know exactly what what uh, you referred to in terms of data volume. Um, how is the compression with CreateDB, and is this a big issue? That was the two questions. Okay, so the trillion is related to our um, Kafka cluster, uh, where we put the raw data in. Uh, where we uh, we use, as, as mentioned again, we use uh, for persistent logging Kafka and we just place some aggregates, for example, each second in crate. So overall we have in our, one of our production clusters with a lot of customers, 700 million entries in crate DB. But this is uh, in terms of uh, points in the, in the persistent log one trillion to clarify that. Uh, about the compression, there are several things how you can compress uh, and uh, uh, you can optimize this um, uh, also with, with the schemas and so on. Uh, and when you have, I come back again to the kilohertz data, when you have eight kilohertz, it makes sense that you clearly understand what you want to do it, uh, downsample it, aggregate it, or calculate FFTs out of that. And this is where Gantner really tries to reduce the data also on the edge, but customers also need it on the cloud, maybe not forever, but uh, we can keep their retention period to serve that they can really work on their assets and predict the performance. Maybe I can also add from the technical side a bit uh, um, on that. So CreateDB uh, does use um, uh, data encoding and other compressing techniques um, for the storage of of uh, numeric values. Um, and uh, of course, it also depends a bit. So and, and also you can optimize it by using a different compression algorithm in CreateDB, um, like a, uh, to save even more on storage. And uh, um, so as Jürgen mentioned, uh, high frequency data, that's something that you might also want to store in, uh, in, array, in arrays in CreateDB. Um, as I mentioned, CreateDB can also work with objects, and, but, but also arrays quite well. And um, we were able to store even uh, 50 kilohertz data in CreateDB with uh, a very um, relatively small footprint using arrays in CreateDB. Mm -hmm. There's one question about costs. Should I comment on that? Um, you can you can comment on that. Um, I can maybe also say in, uh, to other DBs. I think we are uh, quite in line. Um, what pricing is related for professional services and and also our cloud offering. Um, and yeah, but you can feel free to also add to that. Running cost is always a concern. I mean, we talk here about decades of data or terabytes of data. So you have to be effective in terms of data storage and data handling. And of course, we did uh, compare with other concepts, not just databases. And the combination of uh, persistent logging, event sourcing, and the fast indexing with, Kate, is with CreateDB is, I think, uh, for us the, the, the choice. Uh, from the past, and it's also valid for the future. Okay. Okay. Let's see if there are uh, more questions. I don't see anything open. Maybe just wait um, a minute. But first of all, I really want to thank you, Jürgen, for joining us today and uh, presenting what you're doing at, at Gantner. I think it's uh, very relevant and also very advanced in terms of um, what has been done in this area. I, um, yeah, and congratulate you also in terms of Gantner Instruments um, on, on uh, your offerings. Thank you also for the give us the opportunity to present. And I think whenever we we are approaching summer and the uh, heat is going up and you have blackout discussions. So whenever you have that, 
in your private uh, environment or in the business environment, think about the smart grid and have a look on the frequency. It is keeping our lights on. All right. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Um, there are no more questions open. Um, if there are any questions afterwards, uh, we also will share the, the slides and also this video will be made available online. Um, and also the uh, contact information for also Jürgen and me um, are available if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask any of us and come back to us. Thank you very much, Jürgen, again, and I wish you a pleasant afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.